Hey, it's Joel. This is an uncommon way to see me. Well, especially with two other people here at the desk. <laughs> this is Joshua and this is Dan and they're from the X1 Plus team, the custom firmware on the bamboo machines, which is why I've got an X1 Carbon with AMS right here. Hey guys. Hello, hello. Welcome to the studio. It's amazing to have you here. Good to be here. Dan is local. Joshua's from a place far, far away. But first, Joshua, tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Hi there. I, you know, I'm, I'm a hardware engineer, a software engineer. I'm, I'm a Sparky that, that got a little full of himself, I guess. Uh, I've been doing a bunch of work on the uh, X1 Plus firmware side of this. I've been uh, a bunch of the architectural work and a bunch of the design work I've been doing recently. Um, I live down in Mountain View, California, it's true. I'm half of a little two-person consultancy. So yeah, my name is Dan. I'm actually yeah, local to uh, Joel, and uh, I work at a local company. Um, and I was pulled in kind of late into the project uh, I think you had a description for my role in the project. Me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, PRQC. Yeah, yeah. So, so public cool. relations, reaching out to people such as myself and QC, making sure the builds that Joshua makes are up to snuff, I guess. Joshua being a lead developer? Sure. You could, I, I, sure, you could call me that. Joshua flew up for the day. Doesn't have a lot of time. And I was really excited to have him up here and Dan over here because... Most of the time I get to talk about things and show you cool stuff, but it's rare to have the people that actually make it possible here. So what we're going to do is get X1 Plus installed on this machine. And they're going to take me through the process and we're going to find out a little bit more about X1 Plus and how it came to be and how it does its things. And then we've got some, I don't know, some kind of cool tidbits to show you about it. I know that installing custom firmware is risky and I accept the risks. How risky is it? We worked pretty hard to, we, we haven't killed a printer yet. We've gotten excitingly close. You know, I think one of the questions is like, why isn't it released yet? And the answer is because I want to be really sure. I'm going to check this box because I believe you to be good humans and you're not here to damage my bamboo machine. We have some recovery tools with us if we need it. All right, I'm going to click install. Do it. And what should we see at this point? If everything goes well, then we're going to get a little updating uh, logo on the screen and it'll sit there and think for a second. And then On my screen or the bamboo screen? On the bamboo screen. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. Um, it'll, well, on your screen, there will be... It'll sit there and download for a moment. There will be a little spinning update logo on the screen, and then it should launch the installer on the bamboo screen. Goodness. Okay. Yeah. It does say copying X1 Plus setup files right now. That, that sounds good. I like it. Uploading custom firmware bundle. That's exciting. You know, my, I, my heart rate is never high when I install custom firmware in my own printer. But this when, should work. This should work. Right. Yeah. This yeah. should totally work. This ought work. Well, I mean, we don't want to break our own printers, so we've been <laughs> careful as, as much as we can. You know, I'm not worried about breaking your printer. The path that we're going to talk about later is that to upgrade X1 Plus, you'll never run this app on your PC again. Once you have X1 Plus installed, you'll copy a new version of X1 Plus to your SD card, and you'll, you'll hit the button. Okay. Is, is it doing it? Oh, it just said starting printer. Yep. Starting hey, on Britannia we're good, I think. Yep. Right now, we're, we're, we're in the realm of everything that's supposed to happen, correct? We're well within the realm of everything that's supposed to happen. Okay, release notes, internal build. There's some stuff there to read, not too worried about yeah, that, Yeah, don't worry right? about that. No, no, no. Okay. Install. Are you sure? <laughs> what does it say? Once, oh, once it begins, don't touch your printer. Okay, yes. I'm just going to say yes. This is the process can that you're going to take. Can I touch the screen? You can. Like, if, if you want to, like, if you, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah I was just thinking that unpacking installer so does it bring over like a like a compressed package and it has to unzip it essentially that's right and so the the flow that's associated with this the thing that you ran on your laptop you're only going to run once okay in the future you're going to be able to start this installer whenever you like okay yes you you definitely want to download this some people are going to want to download are going to want to install x1 plus offline and there's a path to do that there's a path to install x1 plus without being connected to the network at all for now since you're online maybe hit yes here Okay, now this is base firmware from Bamboo Lab, and I'm downloading it from Bamboo Lab servers. Right. Uh, and that's one of the things that, you know, we're really big on, actually. We don't want to redistribute any of Bamboo Labs' intellectual property. Well, it's right? anything that they don't allow to be redistributed, right? Right. And at some point, you know, we may talk with them such that we can build a streamlined installer bundle that contains a Bamboo firmware. But when we started work on this, we didn't know whether Bamboo was going to be thrilled about this or not. There's tens of hours of engineering effort into not redistributing anything that Bamboo Labs owns. That's fair. Now, we are installing a base firmware. They did recently remove the ability to downgrade. Right. Now, are you downloading a firmware that people cannot downgrade to, or is this a latest greatest? So, so one, you're, you're installing 1.7.1 on here right now. Oh, okay. Um, and, but two, 
The thing about X1 Plus is that we install almost nothing inside the printer. We install this little, little tiny boot stub inside the printer. Little one. Just yeah, a little one. Yeah, a little baby. A little remember, baby okay, remember back in the day, it was uh, 512 bytes right. yeah, for yeah, a yeah. PC bootloader? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people, there were there were um, people who tried to get things in there to see what they could get into 512 bytes, and someone right. made the game of Tetris. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you where, gonna make the game of Tetris in here? Maybe we should have Tetris vaults installing. That would be nice. <laughs> yeah, we install right, about okay. a, a, I think like a two megabyte boot stub or something like that. Okay. So X1 Plus gets installed entirely to your SD card. Well, that's handy. 1.7.0 is gonna stay on your printer uh, until infinity. The idea is that you'll never upgrade the printer's AP board beyond 1.7.0, but you'll still be able to run versions newer than 1.7.0 because they'll be part of X1 Plus on your SD card. Can X1 Plus allow booting to official non-custom firmwares from an SD card? No. You said that kind of sad. Well, like. <laughs> I, I, I said that because I hadn't considered it. There's a handful of customizations that you got to make in order to boot for SD card at all. Currently, those are not separate from the X1 Plus editions. And the X1 Plus editions right now are, or, or they're non-invasive enough that you probably wouldn't want to bother to leave them out. Certainly, I think there's a point in the future in which people are going to want to start making more invasive additions to, to the firmware. I think it's very possible that you may, uh, you may come up with other plugins or other things for X1 Plus. If there's demand for a as little modifications as possible OEM firmware, then sure, right? Then I, it's, I don't know if we're going to provide it, but it would be possible for somebody to do that. One of the questions I did have, though, it says extracting base firmware. Sure. And when we talk about Bamboo Lab firmware, you're extracting it, meaning you're taking the package from the server and extracting it to the SD card. Is that right? Yes, that's right. And in that, now, Bamboo has never intended for their firmware to be available extracted on an SD card. Right. Are there, if, if someone were to have the X1 Plus software and go through this and find that Bamboo firmware is extracted to their SD card, is there information there that they can glean from that themselves if they're technically savvy? So that's one of the things that we were talking about with Dr. Tao actually, is there's this question of how do we as X1 Plus and how do Bamboo Labs protect Bamboo Labs IP, right? And the answer is that Yes, uh, previously, publicly, it hasn't been the case that anybody has had a copy of the Bamboo Lab firmware. Mm -hmm. We can't know whether other people have had access to this and been quiet about it, but we've had access to it for about a year. Uh, we, we've been able to decrypt the Bamboo Lab firmware for about a year. And when I was talking with Dr. Tao about this, one of the things that I wanted to say is like, you know, we want to, we don't want to compromise what you guys are doing. The flip side of this is that the big thing that has always made Bamboo fantastic is not any one piece of IP that they have. The concept of having a touch screen isn't all that new. Prusa had a material switcher of their own and uh, the concept of doing uh, active vibration canceling is, or, or input shaping, Clippers had that forever. Mm -hmm. And the thing that Bamboo did is they built a good product. I, I, I like to joke about this about as an RF engineer is the way to make a, a good radio is to not make a bad radio. <laughs> Um, and the, the way to make a good, there's like a checklist of ways to make a bad 3d printer and bamboo just happened to not check any of the boxes for how to make a bad 3d printer. We consider what makes the bamboo printer a good product is their execution rather than specifically their IP, right? Is, um, okay. That's fair. Cause there, there are clones essentially of the X1 and, you know, in terms of mechanical, you know, overall mechanical design. It's like, you know, they copy, you know, pretty shamelessly the X1, but that doesn't make them a good printer, right? Necessarily. Or well, sure. I mean, when you talk about it, right, there's a lot of Ender 3 variants, but they're not yeah. all of the same quality. Yeah. And we, if we're talking about that, yeah. right? Copying mechanical design does not equate to having yourself a good product. And the thing, though, is it's like, so it's more than just the parts. It's like it's Bamboo's execution on the whole project, right? Oh, uh, I see. So the, the Bamboo itself, this machine though, is greater than the sum of it's like it's exactly like right. someone could copy the firmware one to one, and they're still not gonna have a good printer, right? Okay. I hope this is the build that has the SD card fix. It does. Hey, look at that. See the Penguin X1 Plus, Linux fans. What's up? So right. So this is this is a Linux machine inside, by the way. Um, this is just a Linux machine inside. Hey, look at, look at that. that. 
That's a little bit. Joel, you haven't lubricated your lead screws. I am a terrible human. We will do that later. <laughs> Why are, now that so this is up though, I can reset camera view and we can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's let's zoom the camera out and okay. we're gonna do some shenanigans. Us is hitching it yep. to it to uh, get a few shenanigans. Shenanigans. Look at that. We recomposed. It's good to have nerds together, you know. It took some doing. It did take some doing. We now what we can do apparently with X1 Plus is actually look at the printer screen on my computer screen. Is that right? Yeah, we're gonna be built. We're gonna be able to VNC to your printer. That's fantastic. It's oh. not a. It's not a button on the front of the printer. We're gonna do some SSH commands to make it happen. But we'll do Ooh. it together. Okay. I, I like SSH. I'm gonna run Putty, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So we're gonna want an IP address out of that thing. Should uh, Dan, can you go get the IP address, or I'll please? Get it. 10.1.10.40. I will need the password. Dot 40. Yeah. Oh my goodness, except yeah. login as root. Login as root, okay. Yeah. So now VNC? So, all right, so let's so let's uh, get this set up. One of these days I wanna have a button for it on, on the printer, but for now we're gonna do it by hand. Okay. So go ahead and start off, uh, do slash Etsy slash init.d. Do I not have tab completion? You do have tab completion. There we There's go. There's cap S99 service, and then you can tab complete that one. Yes, service Sir. check. Stop. So one of the cool things about these printers, this is one of the things that I find really like, obviously you can tell that they're making a consumer product and they're doing what it takes to build a consumer product based on a Linux machine. And this has bitten me about a billion times. They have, they have something that sits there and runs and makes sure that every all the printer services are running. Oh, really? Uh, and if any that of them die- That is a very consumer friendly sort of daemon that's running, right? Right, yeah, yeah. And so if any of them die, then it goes and restarts them, which is great, except for the problem that if I'm doing development on them, then it goes and restarts things that I've killed out from under me. So now go ahead and S98, uh, oh, S99 screen service. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. go ahead and stop that one. Stopped, okay. Hey, look at that, it did indeed. Oh, that is that is literally the service running the screen display. Right, that's exactly right. And, and now if, if for some reason I'm playing in here and I'm like, oh crap, what did I do? I can power cycle the machine. Yes, that's right. And so now go ahead and type slash opt slash BBL under, well, BBL hit the tab maybe. Yeah, there you go. Okay, BBL uh, screen patch. Dash platform space VNC colon size equals 1280 by 720. Hit enter. Yeah, okay, it's alive. All right, fire up VNC. There you go. Joel, you still haven't lubricated I your haven't lead lubricated screws. I haven't lubricated the lead screws. Well, I run I, I run a couple servers at home. I've got Unraid, I've got TrueNAS. Like mm -hmm. I, I understand the purpose and how valuable having services on a remote box that you can control remotely right. and reliably. Like mm -hmm. this, this makes a lot of sense. Okay, so I'm in. This is X1 Plus, sure. enhanced printer firmware. I guess we can go through the menus and all, Let's go right? through the menu, yeah. So let's, uh, we can go onto the, that left side there and uh, you're gonna see a lot of familiar things, right? And if you head over to utilities, um, that's gonna look a little different, I bet. Oh. Why don't we have a, a quick go at something here? Why don't you go sure. launch uh, bed leveling? And so this is a new screen. This, this yeah, is a new screen. This is brand new. Go ahead and hit run diagnostics. So it's gonna do the normal bed leveling. I assume that one of the reasons why this isn't part of the things that Bamboo sh uh, ships with the printer is because it's really hard to contextualize that information. Well, right. Well, in my conversations with Bamboo, right. they specifically said that they can provide the best user experience if right. they control the hardware and the software. Right. And that makes a lot of sense Right. for most people. Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and click confirm here. And then now on the right-hand side, so first off, um, what I've told you First thing that I know is that uh, your bed isn't in tram right now. Oh, look uh, at that. Uh, so I know that if you, your your bed is tilted by about a half a millimeter. Now this is gonna happen, so if we take a bed like this and we just skew it a little bit, right. because of the lead screw is all operating at the same rate, then it's just skewed a little bit and that right. means it's out of tram, right? Right, okay. that's exactly right. And so this is one of the things that I think that we can offer that's more useful than, and so what the other thing that I'm showing here is that if you trammed everything, if you got it, perf if you got the bed perfectly trammed, then your bed would be 0.33 millimeters of not flat, which kind of sounds like a lot, but it's not. It's about, it's less, or it's just over 0.1% over the bed. Go <laughs> ahead and, so go ahead and click on, on that arrow there. Um, which you would do normally by tapping. Oh, okay. And so this is showing you what your bed looks like right now. 
right? Yeah. And so right now you have a peak to peak deviation of uh, 0.43 to 0.2. So it's okay. So that's what 0.7 millimeter, right? Yeah. Uh, because and and the printer is compensating. I bet you haven't noticed that. This is probably why Bamboo hasn't bothered to, to show you this because it works, right? <laughs> um, but if you wanted to tram this out, this gives you the information that you need to tram this out and ah, to determine whether you've trammed it I out. I see. Well, it really, like within Bamboo Studio, they have basic and advanced in their slicer, a, a basic user and an advanced user. There's right. different. There should be different options available to each. It does show me that it is, it is off a little bit. So right. then... It says post leveling peak to peak deviation would be 0.33. So that right. 0.7 is right. what's saying after after tramming the bed, it would be right. 0.3. Right. Based on our, you know, we do a linear fitting on it. Yeah. Um, that that makes was, sense. I, so I haven't gotten to do matrix math since I was an undergrad. See, math, it works. So tramming the bed, is that an automated procedure or does that tell me how many rotations to turn a lead screw? We're getting there. To so. which part? You're getting to automated or um, you're getting to? Getting to, well, certainly it can't turn the screws itself. Okay. That's um, that would be yeah. nice. That would be lovely. On the So if you look on Bamboo Labs Wiki, uh, they have a, you can go ahead and click the tram bed button. I don't know if we give you directions as to what to do. Well, so we do give directions. We don't tell you like how many turns. Oh, right. I think, right. So that's work in progress, right? Yeah. I think somebody, I think, I think somebody's yeah. working on that. And so the, the official wiki tells you that you should run their G code, which kind of hovers the, the tool head over each mm -hmm. of three positions a handful of times, and you have to get it at exactly the right time. One of the things that we give you is if you hit the prepare button there, so it'll go level itself, and as soon as it does that, these buttons will light up. So now it's that. giving you the, you could click on each of those buttons and it'll move the tool head to the right position. Oh, okay. Oh, and then I can do... Then the, you go twist the knob, see. right? This makes a lot of sense. And so this is the kind of thing that you can do if you can send G-code to the printer, right? If you can if you can send little bits of G-code directly to the printer, right. which we can. Why don't you also hit a vibration compensation there? And so go ahead and hit run frequency suite. Uh, and so this is the... Uh, we're going to find all of the resonant frequencies of your lab here. This is the stuff that you're used to at this point, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit of a different readout than you're used to, right? It is. Yeah. What's going on here? Internally, the printer knows knows, as far as we understand, the way they do this compensation, they command the tool head to vibrate, then they have an accelerometer inside the tool head. And so you can see, by the way, the amplitude of what it's measuring is going up, right? And now mm -hmm. back down. So how loud it is in, in decibels corresponds to the, if I were any good of an analog engineer, I would call this the gain. And so you can see as it starts getting quiet, it's actually going to up in higher frequencies. Below zero, it's getting less movement than it commands. Which, oh. which we can expect. Because it's right? just a waveform. Right, exactly. Right. For you double E nerds, I, I, I'm pretty sure this is a linear time independent system. Ooh, there um, you go. But, um, is that right? Is that right? You let him know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Down in the comments, tell us whether this is a linear time independent system or, or whether an inverse Fourier transform is not sufficient for this. Okay, it's going to go and compensate for this whole thing, mm -hmm. or it's going to calibrate this whole thing. The other field that you're seeing there, that's uh, phase is in radians, if, if you care. I don't personally, Yeah, but some the, will. So the amplitude is actually interesting, though. What we're going to learn from this is, one, we're going to know the resonant frequency of the printer, right, mm -hmm. uh, of the belts, and, and it's going to be able to compensate. Right. It does that without us, right? And sometime, I don't know if you've ever gotten the message saying, hey, the belts aren't tight. You can So the printer does that as an internal diagnostic, and it gives you kind of a go, no-go, mm -hmm. right? It tells you, okay, everything's fine. Everything is not fine. For folks who are running print farms who want to trend the life of their printers and do pre-failure analysis and all that kind of stuff, who want to know before a printer goes out of service. This is the kind of information you might want to run this oh. nightly, right? And trend changes over time, or you can tell if a bearing on a pulley is got or is dying or something. So then where you've got X and Y axes, the KSI and the PK. So could you then within the firmware, if something gets above a certain variance, color it red or yellow? Yeah, that seems plausible. You know, this is a manual thing, right? Mm -hmm. But yes, we, we store these data on the SD card. This lives with your three MFs oh, on okay. the SD card. Um, but go ahead and click on it. And by click, I mean tap because you're using your finger here. I am, yes. This is a fairly yeah. typical display, by the way. This is fairly typical in as much as... Uh, the X and Y axis have slightly different resonant frequencies. That makes sense because that does make printer, sense. Yep. Right? it's a different design. But we can know what these these resonant frequencies are. We're seeing them here, right? Yep. Uh, it, it's telling us these resonant frequencies. We can see the shape of the resonance curve on the rest of the printer. If the stepper motors were getting weak, right, we would see the overall response diminished. If we were seeing a bearing failure in a pulley, then we would see an extra peak in here on the resonant frequency of, of whatever that bearing is that's failing. I see what you're getting at. So right. something something like this, just run nightly, doesn't 
keep it in tip top shape, it can actually expose potential problems. Right. That's exactly That's right. That's cool. Smart. That's really cool. Smart test for your printer. Right. Exactly. But again, this is this is something what's really neat is you're exposing something that bamboo is doing automatically. Right. You're just gleaning more information from it and presenting it to the user. That's right. That's cool. This is kind of what I what I talk about when I say we're not working against bamboo. Well, no, um, I, I understand. I understand sure. that. Yeah. But I, I think a lot of folks are thinking like that custom firmware is an adversarial thing, right? It can we're, be. Right. And in this case, you're chaotic good. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's right. Okay, so go ahead and let's back out of this one here. Okay. This dry filament is something they introduced not that long ago. Right. And, and if you were driving this with your finger, you would be swiping up on the screen for this. So you're going to have to click and drag. Here. Oh, okay. And so the printer has a bunch of built-in statistics about how many times the AMS is switched and how much, how many meters it's fed through each part of the filter of the AMS and through the each. And th so these are statistics that are just meaning AMS, meaning whatever's plugged in, it's not doing it per AMS. Meaning if you replaced your AMS, I is think that's, I think it's per printer. Okay. It's, okay. it's your printer's odometer, right? Right. right. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah, but it, if, you, if I were to replace my AMS, what I was wondering is if if this of these AMS figures were per AMS, like per serial number, because you know they're serialed and they right. get that information. Okay, but it's but it's just strictly printer odometer. I think it is printer odometer. Okay. I want you to take a look at the you see that network drop down. You can go ahead and click on uh, Bamboo Cloud there. Most people, this is again a different story for most people, right? Um, most people are happy to have their, including me, are happy to have their printer on the uh, bamboo cloud. And there are folks who are currently air gapping their printer because yep. they're they're printing sensitive stuff, right? Or they're they're worried about things not necessarily because they suspect that bamboo is doing anything bad with it, but they can't take the risk. Well, right? for various reasons. Right. right. Various right. reasons. Sure. Yeah. And so bamboo has had land mode for a while. And land mode is a is is a good start. Kind of one of the challenges there is that it's hard to verify. It's hard to verify that land mode does what it says. We've added uh, what we call shield mode. And so shield mode, because it's just a Linux machine in there, mm -hmm. we turn on an IP tables firewall. We prevent the printer from making any outbound TCP connections. So you can still run the slicer inside your network. The printer won't be able to connect out to Bamboo's servers. Like it's impossible because you've Firewall right. the IPs. Yes, right. Okay. The, the the printer the, at the kernel level, we've turned on a firewall so that even if there are things that we don't know, that that it can't connect out. Right. Right. Well, and this is this is going to be very useful for Bamboo if they need to get into sensitive locations. Right. Like like DoD and military and right. schools, educational facilities. Right. That's why I know they have the X1E for complete right. offline mode, but this allows now at the consumer level, them to echo that sort of functionality. And the, the nice thing about this is because this is in the open source part of it, right, the, the part that we've built, that means that that you can verify it, right? You can verify. Oh, right. It's, yeah, it's open you can, source. Right, like you, you can, can go and be like, hey, they're doing that one right. That's right. the right way to do that. Right. Well, right. You can SSH over to the printer and you can, you can see if the IP tables rules are there, right? If you actually select it, you'll see a description exactly what it does. Oh, look at that. That does kind of go to one of the other questions that people have about using these things offline, right? And so we demonstrated a moment ago uh, giving you a new X1 Plus firmware version mm -hmm. based on, this happened to be based on the same Bamboo firmware version. I have a 1.7.2 on my laptop here that we could do a build of. <laughs> um, but, um, and then put it on the SD card and then put it in the machine and like that, right. we're able to upgrade. Right, but why don't you go to the firmware version section, just click on that there. One thing that's interesting is a bunch of oh. these parts all have serial numbers and they all have their own firmware on them. And so one question that I think people have had for a while is, can I upgrade the whole system offline? And the answer till now has been no. And so the problem is that you have, certainly you have the, what you call 1.7.1 is actually a combination of a bunch of different firmware. Right. Sure. The firmware running on the AP, firmware running on the MC, on the toolhead, on the AMS. Usually we upgrade those all in lockstep. The whole idea behind having this as a separate screen is giving you the opportunity to do that offline upgrade of each of those that you couldn't before. Uh, and so in this case, nothing is wrong. Uh, all of your firmware versions are exactly the right one for 1.7.1. Perfect. If something, you know, if one of those were incorrect, it would highlight itself in orange there. Kind of moving away from hardware and firmware versions, uh, why don't you go launch the screen lock here? And uh, if you hit time before display sleeps and set it to two minutes, and while you're at it, uh, go ahead and hit 
in lock screen mode. Go ahead and hit set that to passcode. Okay, so it should time so, out. So right. So if we sit still for a little bit. Hey, this printer's locked. Look at this. Uh -huh. Pull to unlock. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Grab on the. Uh, yeah, yeah. Pull. Yeah. Pull the screen open. Um, One, two, three, three. This printer is locked. Right. I was a QA engineer. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. It's enough to keep passers by from, from poking their fingers at it. Right. Well, and if we talk about Bamboo Lab machines at trade shows, that's also because they're doing example prints and they don't want someone to come up and fidget just, with it, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, that, obviously could somebody be... could reach behind it and hit the power button, right? Sure. Or somebody sure. could pull the SD card out and it's over. Don't pull the SD card out while you're running X1 Plus. X1 Plus is running from the SD card. What don't would happen? happen? If everything goes well, you get an angry warning message. Okay. If not, then the printer crashes in weird ways. Okay. What was the first external feature request we got? We gave it to uh, Michael oh, over yeah, teaching Michael. tech, yeah, right? Yeah, he asked for the uh, replacement uh, sc home screen. Oh, right. really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. How do we do yeah. that? Why don't we power it down and put it on the SD card? So X1 Plus. X1 Plus. Images. Uh, printers. Printers. Inside your serial number folder there. Oh. Now create a folder in here called images. And go ahead and drop your, there's a home.png that you made that you like. Huh? There sure is. All right. Now you can go ahead and Print eject it. that guy. So all the fixes that we did, we won't be able to, we need to be able to VNC in still, right? We need to, uh, right. So we'll, yeah. we'll putty back over, or I mean, we can just poke at the front of the screen, right? We could poke at the front of the screen. So we should, I should see it, right? Uh, when it finishes booting up. I'm right now. Yeah. Although, see, I was right. There it is. Yep. So now the image there, it, it's got a gray border around it. Presumably it's, uh, you, you, I think all of our images have had a transparent background. Um, but if you want to size it to the uh, entire size there, I'm not sure what the size is. But. Oh, okay, okay. Because you told me it was seven hundred by five thirty-one. Yeah, that's what the old image was. I don't know oh. if that's the whole size. Oh, so and and now being able to do this, I can experiment and, right. and grow it and shrink right. it and do all sorts mm -hmm. of crazy stuff. So let's, because you got to run to the airport sooner or later. I got to go to the airport. Yeah. And there's this this thing here called logs. There's why the we, elephant. Why in don't room. we finish up with here? There's the elephant in the room, and that is logs. There's been lots of talk about bamboo, and the logs that are generated on the X1 machine, and what is sent up. And um, some people have said that some things. What's what's going on here? You're you're a software developer. I'm a I was a software developer. I understand logging and logging levels. You inherently do, especially with respect to this. What's going on? So the first thing that I'll say is that I don't know everything about this. I've spent most of my time reverse engineering other stuff. And if I look in the logs, it's to figure out why why something is busted. Like if I go through the logs, it's to figure out why your SSH server wouldn't come up. Most of my time in the logs, I, I actually haven't really been digging for okay. for what people have done. One of the things that we've done is we've added a a little bit of a, a log redaction here. So you can search the logs if you want, but- um, Well, these are X1 plus logs, right? These right? are X1 plus logs. These aren't the general logs. Right, uh, these are a lot of the general logs, but not, we do a little bit of light filtering to keep some of the spam out of it. There's, right, there's- Some just, things are really chatty, aren't right, they? Right, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> there are a lot of services that are pretty chatty and, and we, we try and keep some of that down. Okay. Whatever I tell you, somebody else, once this is in the rest of the world's hands, somebody else is gonna go and correct me and find something else logged in there. And when I chatted with Dr. Tao, that was part of it, right? I was like, well, you know, the thing that I knew, for example, was that uh, it logs your SSID, right? Your wireless, uh, your wireless network SSID. Yep. Probably isn't necessary to log, right? Probably not. And for some people, some people consider that PII, right? You know, Joshua Wise's network or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So are there other things of that nature that are logged? Probably. Get the feeling that somebody else is going to go do a deep dive on this sooner or later. But well, and with, with the SSID, as an example, as mm -hmm. a software developer, if I was creating a function to get me the SSID of the machine and tell me the, d the details about it, I would log that information because right. it is it is a call to something. And if I want to see throughput and a log and find how far into a function call I am, right. that's what it's there for. And there's there's this tension, right? When you're developing this, I, I, I sort of get the sense, and this is by the way, you know, I've seen this 
with some of the clients that I've worked for, right? Is like, there's very much this right hand, left hand of logging, right? <laughs> yes. um, over here, you have a developer who is working on whatever service on the machine, right? And just, and, and starts typing into into their program to log, right? Yep. Um, because they have a log file and that's what they do. And over here, you have support engineer, right? Who is like, we are going to need to figure out what is wrong in the field with these machines. Oh, hey, look at this. You know what we have for this? We have logs. We should upload our logs, right? And the confluence is that these two engineers, it wasn't their job to talk to each other, right? And this is a function of, again, the what I've, you know, the folks that I've worked with are building IoT things about this fast, right? It's a time, you know, they're doing a time to market thing and you're going to build a feature. Are you going to, right? You're yep. going to ship a printer or not? I feel a little bit of sympathy for that. The answer is that I, I don't really know. I don't really know what's in the okay. logs. I'll give you one anecdote that, that makes me feel a little, a little better about this. Okay. Uh, I was on the phone with Dr. Tao. He asked me how many people have this custom firmware installed. Okay. We had like a handful of, you know, of, of Michael and, and Nero and, and, and now and, me and now you, right. And we, you know, and a handful of us and I went, oh, like there's like six or seven printers with this. And I thought for a minute and I went, wait, you probably can tell, you can tell me that I bet our firmware reports itself as version 99.0 to the bamboo cloud. I had been sitting there waiting uh, for some engineer inside of bamboo to go like, what's this? Right? Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, and I, I, I'd been really wishing I could be on a, fl a fly on the wall <laughs> in that room. I bet you can tell me you can tell me how many 99.0 printers there are out there. And he said, well, we're pretty careful about our data logging. That data might get uploaded, but what they store and what they analyze, he told me, basically, they don't want to analyze any more than they have to without running it by legal first, right? <laughs> and their default stance, he told me, was that they they just don't, you know, if, if they're not sure, if they don't really need to do it, they don't do it. To me, having a version dashboard seems like the sort of thing that you need to do, right? Or that, that I would need to do. I would, if I was making something like this, I would have a version dashboard. Right. right. Yeah. Um, but. Absolutely. Like, so one, that puzzled me slightly. Two, it actually gave me a little bit more confidence that what he was saying about whatever they process with the logs is of decent nature, at least, that there isn't. If they're including G code strings or whatever in there, um, then it is not because they want to go and replicate your print on on a machine back there. And I can't know, right? This is this is something that's totally unknowable to me. But from that conversation with Dr. Tao, I it kind of gave me a different impression of what they could be doing okay. with logs. I don't know, right? I, I can't say anything for certain. We're now at a point in history with bamboo where they're agreeable to this custom firmware and someone super concerned about that can opt to LAN plus shield and not send anything off the device. Right. See, you're giving users choice. Now that I've, now that I'm appearing to be, uh, uh, an extremely an apologist for bamboo. Um, I, but no, but I'm, I guess the reason why I'm, I'm feeling that way also is that it's very, very rare that you have a vendor go like, oh yeah, good point. Yeah, let's have custom <laughs> firmware, right? Well, like, as, as a consultant, you've dealt with a lot of vendors and for right. someone to be like, oh, hey, good point. That's right. probably rare. <laughs> you sure. are far between. Right. But I mean, like if you think of like how many years did it take before Android vendors started deciding that they wanted people to, uh, they wanted to let people unlock bootloaders, right? How many years yeah. was it like, it was until Galaxy S6 or 7 that you could unlock the bootloader on those. Usually that's a really slow process. And so to have a vendor that is willing to go like, oh yeah, yeah mm -hmm, yep, sure, sounds good, let's do it. Well, and not only that, right. they put forth a plan that they wanted to use in a blog right. post. Like right. Dr. Tao did that. So right. that's that's incredible for them to move at that speed. Right. Like I didn't expect that. I, I no. can't, I, I would imagine you guys, when you saw that blog post, you were like, Oh, good morning. Whoa. Right. That was a right. surprise. We had an inkling that it was coming. We, we <laughs> traded a little bit of mail about it. You know, Dr. Tao and I met like two or three times, right? The first time he, uh, it was like, okay, like who are, who is everyone here? Right. Yeah. And the second time he came back and said, okay, I have a proposal from our R and D team. Um, just like, that. <laughs> right. I was like, well, I, well, that hasn't happened before. <laughs> um, 
I went from, you know, cautious to cautiously optimistic to, to optimistic, optimistic. Wow. And didn't take long for that curve to happen, did it? I, it was shocking to me. It's, it's just not what I, it's not my experience in this kind of thing. Uh, it, it makes a lot of sense to me that they're putting forward relatively conservative proposals first, right? Okay. If they're saying, coming back to the warranty question of warranty on hardware, right? I could imagine that their internal policy maybe, you know, will do best effort to. Could be, right? right? We yeah. don't know. It's early. We haven't released anything. They haven't released. Who, who really knows? At least we're having a discussion with them now, right? It's we're, we're trading proposals. So it's, it's, we never really expected any of this, right? It's like, no. this is all totally shocking. It's actually more than we were hoping for, right? And it's uh, because of, uh, you know, you and Michael helped hook us up. Well, I'm glad to. And it's more than what you hoped for. And we're still at the beginning. Yeah. Like, it, like this is, the future's bright. We, we've talked about a lot here. Whatever makes it to whatever makes it to tape is going to be amazing. Right. Uh, we've we've troubleshooted. We did software development. We did builds. I VNC'd in. We've SSH'd. We've attached to the AP board. Like, like we did a lot today. We should we should feel very accomplished with ourselves. Yeah. We did, in fact, more than I hoped to. Actually, I yeah, I, I really yeah. hoped I was... not to connect a, a UART cable Look to your that. board. Bring it in. <laughs> Come on, bring it in. Oh, hey. oh, there it is. <laughs> That's a good hug right there. Um, well, okay, so now, because we're towards the end, uh, just look at the camera there and tell everybody where they can go to find out more. So if you want to find more about X1 Plus, look in the description below the video where you'll find the website that you'll need to go to find more information. Look at that. Look at that. Hey, it worked. Dude, dude, we did it. Okay, okay, I'm going to close it out and then we're going to high okay. five. Okay, sure. okay. Thanks for watching. If you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for cause you believe in and hack all the things. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. pointing at the camera. Yeah, I'm doing yeah. it. <laughs> As always, high five. High five to the audience. Yeah. And then oh. we get to do it. Yeah. Bring it in, bring it. Come on, do it Wait, again. Wait, we should do it again. Yeah. Yeah.